This song could be for you as well. Welcome to Patriot's Lament right here on KFAR. I'm Steve Floyd, the monkey behind the machine, making sure that everybody's microphone is on this morning. Joining me across the other side of the studio, we've got Dave Giesel from the Fairbanks Campaign for Liberty. Good morning, Dave. Good morning, Steve. And we've also got Josh Bennett from Bighorn Enterprises. Good morning, Josh. Good morning. All right. Well, what is on the agenda today for... Patriots Lament. Were you still with the Campaign for Liberty? Yeah. Oh. Cool. Good was drink. there a purge? Uh, <laughs> no, but we're yeah. drinking some coffee, so we're working on oh, it. Oh, we're working on the purge. Of the, uh, the coffee, I guess. This really strong usually coffee takes too. about an hour. Put some of this in it. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, what's on the... I think well, we're going to... Yeah, we're going to close out the uh, the year with a story that, that shows us what is possible if we can get a uh, political party into power... In, in, in a majority. Which would lead us to the light bulb ban. And today there's a story in the news that the Republican majority in the House, even in the House, could not stop the light bulb ban. Not even amongst themselves. They're so powerful, yet so <laughs> ineffectual. They couldn't even stop the light bulb ban. They so, actually tried to. They tried to stop it, but now... Out go the incandescents. Now, basically, the incandescents, those are the light bulbs that have been working for the last hundred years without burning people's houses down and without causing... No uh, mercury. Yeah, we can't uh, have any they, of that, though. Be, and, and affordable, too. Uh, but they use just a little bit more energy than these new bulbs are reportedly to use, yet these new bulbs have some serious health risks that have not been fully addressed. The old ones work, too. That's right. It's a, I mean, even if, even if they didn't... Right. Even yeah. if, you know, who cares? It's just it's a light bulb. It's a means. It's it's something you, you know, put 120 volts into and it emits light. Right. right. And, and that is regulated. The, the way government in which is regulated. you are allowed to emit light from the electricity that you pay for in your own home, in your own home is. Uh, yeah, is now being regulated. And, and our uh, and when people keep telling us, well, all we need to do is just if we don't like the way the laws or the regulations are going, we just need to vote the right people in. And so the the Republicans, we got them a majority. Majority in 2010. And with all of the power they can muster, they can't stop light bulbs from being banned. Maybe we just need more of a majority. (laughs) Maybe. Maybe. Maybe to get the real to get the real big stuff. Maybe if we just had 100 percent Republican control and not not just not just control, but 100 percent Republicans, if every single member of the House of Representatives was a Republican. And every single member of the Senate was a Republican, and the president was. Re- what if every single person in politics was mm. a Republican? Would then would things change and be better for? Liberty? Would they be able to 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 keep incandescent light bulbs on the shelves? <laughs> well, would they would they be able to uh, maintain our liberty if we yeah, had 100 no, percent? I, I think I think that's a every single question. person every single person Republican. What do you think, Josh? Should we vote in absolutely every single? office, make sure that they're all Republicans, 100% across the board? Would that give us our, our liberties back? Uh, no. Oh. Well, okay. it might give us our... No, it wouldn't give us our light no? bulbs back either. All right. Uh, 458 Tonka is the number if you'd like to call in. We've already got some calls coming in, gentlemen. Would you like to go to the phones, or is there something else you wanted to say first? No, maybe they want to talk about the light bulbs. All right. Good morning, caller. Welcome to Patriots Lament. Who's this? Hello. Hey, who is this? My name is Dan. Dan, go ahead. You guys are talking about lighting and stuff right now? Sure. What kind of lighting does the borough have in most of their buildings? Fluorescent, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why hasn't why haven't the borough gone to the new LED four-foot fluorescents that they have? If you'd like to know more about them, you can check with the city of Tannenau. We've completely redone the shop out there in fluorescent lighting. And it's all done with LED bulbs. Uh, you can get them out of the state. Uh, I know T- City of Tannenau is one of the first places in the state to have the LED lighting. Uh, if you want to know more about it, get old Bear Kessler. All right. He's the city manager of Tannenau. You guys could save a lot of money. It saves them close to 70% in that we, shop out there. I'm, I'm all for saving 100% where we don't pay the borough's electricity bill anymore. Well... That that would be nice, but you know somebody's got to pay it if you're going to have all. Yeah, maybe maybe the assembly members should pay it instead of us paying them. Let's have them pay their own electricity bill. Way too big. You know, Dan, you just you just said you believe that the borough's gone too way too big, but you also said that somebody's got to pay it. Why? Well, no, I said somebody has to pay for the lighting in there. Is what I'm saying. 
I do not. I think we should eliminate a lot of the borough positions that we have, myself, and start going to a voluntary system. Agreed. And, you know, if government did that all the way around, you might end up with some decent people in there, the people that really wanted to be there for the people and do the best they can instead of lining their own pockets. Oh, you might. It but has been tried. It has been tried indeed. Now, there's one other thing to keep in mind, that when somebody actually gets into power, no matter what they said while you, they were running for office, something happens at the point when they're actually sitting there with the choice in front of them of who shall we give money to. Because when, I, I mean, think about it. Even yourself, Dan, if you had a big pile of money sitting in front of you and so they started talking about where to put the money instead of ever mentioning where that money came from, that's part of the problem. We need to realize that money that we're spending in a borough government is coming out of our our pocket, people. Yeah. Yeah, but, but that is arguing one. Um, arguing for less is not taking a different moral position than the people who argue for more. It's the well, same how, how philosophical. About it's the right, like our it's the same philosophical. It's the same philosophical position, which is that someone should be. Uh, should be, um, you know, stolen from at at gunpoint essentially. No, I do yep. not think it, we it is. It, do you agree with Do you agree with taxation in principle? I think we need to limit government. So government do you? No. Yes or no. Yes or no. Yes or no answer. Earnings. Do you agree with taxation in principle? Yes or no. I would rather see no. Okay. Right right okay. So something. if you do not yeah. agree with it in principle, if you think it's wrong because it's theft. It's coercive force to take someone's money against I their understand. will. Isn't then the England only consistent isn't that what we fought can we England over do something with this? The only consistent position then, if you think taxation is wrong, is that government should be eliminated. When you when you compromise and you say, Well, I wish there was no taxes, but I, I we should we, we should, should just have a smaller government. Five, you're selling out your only to... principle and you're taking the same exact philosophical position as the people who believe in the total state. All right. Thanks, well, Dan, we for the call. We're going to do the things we need is the only thing I'm trying to say. We can do and the things we need if we can somehow. keep our own money but and allocate it ourselves. Look at their wages. It's just no, so you're, you're, but you're arguing administration, no right? You're saying the problem with the state is that it's administered it's inefficiently, not efficient. that they steal from people. Hey, Dan, we're going to let you go and take some other calls. Appreciate you calling in this morning. Four five eight talk is the morning. <laughs> It's the number. Good morning. All right, good number. Hello. Good morning, this is Al. And Thanks, Happy Al. New Year. Appreciate it. Uh, the, the larger question now is, is since light bulbs and lighting is highly regulated, pervasively regulated, does that now entail the government to come in and inspect your home without a warrant? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think you're you're still allowed to to uh, you're still allowed to use incandescent bulbs. It's just you're not allowed. They're not allowed to be sold anymore. For now, I mean. For but, now, but right? but, For but, now. but if they've now, now to, well, as a uh, as a retailer though, though the answer would be yes. Yeah. As a retailer, if you sell incandescent bulbs. Oh yeah. You're breaking the law. But by default, you're not allowed to buy them. So if they. Right. Yeah. Effectively. If they uh, consider that you purchase light bulbs and have them in your house and in your possession. You you could you, be a potential light bulb salesman at terrorist. that point. I and think we now, need to get another government agency fired up on this thing. Now they will be allowed to inspect. What? Al, you still there? Oh, yes. Now they will be allowed to inspect your home because the court says if you are involved in a, in anything that's highly regulated, regulated, mm-hmm. they don't need a search warrant to inspect. Well, yeah, that would be like illegal black market stuff right yeah, there. Yeah, light bulb trading ring. You can see underground, this, cash right, only. Get this big we'll have this big van, mm-hmm. armored van going down and have a big light bulb on it. Have you seen <laughs> a, me? A compact fluorescent <laughs> on it. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. Have you seen me? <laughs> Report. How are they gonna fix all the headlights on uh, cars? Uh those are um I don't know. Those are halogen. Yeah. But that's still a type of uh incandescent. You know, it's the type of incandescent. Um, the, I, the, I, yeah. the main point of the whole thing and why we brought it up is because the Republican held house could not could not stop even a small incandescent light bulb ban. No, I completely understood where your guys <laughs> yeah. were going. I was just saying, well, now here's all the after effects of now what government can do to you. 
Oh, you bet. Waterproof match holders and now incandescent light bulbs. Dun, dun, dun. Watch out. All your flashlights. <laughs> Report. Far North needs to stock up on uh, Aaron, Be- Aaron Bennett's over there. You're sounding off, but I can't hear you because you're not by a microphone. What'd you say? I said Far North needs to stock up on a bunch of incandescents so people can come black market them. From oh, us. I like it. What are they going to do with all the flashlights and all the other lighting? I mean, they're just talking about household stuff, but it says, you know, incandescent bulbs. Yeah. There's many, many different applications of in- incandescent bulbs. Mm-hmm. Oh, Al- I don't want to give them any ideas. Yeah, yeah thank you, Al. Yeah. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. Are you, work- are you working for so. them? All right. Thank you for the call. Let's move on. 458-TALK is the number. Good morning. Who's this? Uh, this is Scott. Scott, go ahead. Yeah, you mentioned uh, incandescent boy. You ought to call Young's office. He'll be in there another 50 years to figure out how to get rid of him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I don't have a computer. I've hardly had electricity over the last 20 years, but I was in Anchorage for a week. I was on a computer, and all these Ronald Reagan fans in this country, I want them to look up because I was just looking up in the library down there. Uh, when he became president, 8 million people worked for the government on all levels in this country. Today, we're over 25 million. Uh, what does that tell you, whether it's the light bulb ban or anything else? Yep, they got to create work for him. Hey, they're regulators. <laughs> Twenty-five million are regulating the other uh, two hundred seventy million. Yep, because uh, that's what we need, though, isn't it? Because we can't figure out for ourselves what kind of light bulb is more efficient for our homes. Yeah, well, that's true. Well, you know, one of the other things uh, under Reagan is that everyone advocated for making government more efficient. And uh, when those regulators, when those twenty-five million people are working efficiently, what's the output? More regulation, right? Wouldn't well, it be wouldn't it be great if we paid everybody in government the same amount but they did nothing? Wouldn't I mean I'd take that trade off. I would. Yeah. It, you know, it's like watching TV and they talk about these cops hidden watching you all the time. You know, sadly we've just become a police state in this country. You know, they, they, everything these high fluting Republicans or Democrats they, they've turned us into nothing but a police nanny state. Yeah, it's really funny when uh they start threatening to have a government shutdown, and everyone panics. Oh, no. I'd, yes, please. <laughs> yeah. Government, shut down as many days as you can. You should give can... them a 365-day paid, paid vacation every year. Well, the well, two... question is, in a lifetime, will we ever get rid of Don Young? <laughs> <laughs> I'd be willing to pay for him to go to jail for two but, weeks. But, but wait, if we did that, then we wouldn't get all of our federal money that Alaska needs oh. and deserves. Yeah, you know, that's a good point. Um <laughs> I was listening to some, uh, talking to what's the caller here, we was listening to some representatives the other day on the radio, several of them actually, and they're all talking about, you know, they want, they're anxious to get back to Juneau, these are state guys, because they're going to pass a budget and how important it is they need to pass this budget and blah, blah, blah. And I'm going to hopefully question them this week. I was wondering, you know, apparently our budget is the most important thing in the world. I don't agree with that, but... I wonder what they're going to do when the feds nationalize the permanent fund and they don't have a budget to pass anymore. Mm-hmm. What do you think about that? Well, I think what will happen with the permanent fund, these government workers with their furs and turds, uh, they'll sue to get their retirement, and that will be it'll be gone there. Yeah, half of it will be gone instantly. Uh, because uh, they promise, you know, they promise so much money to these clowns who work for the government, they, you know, the courts will give it to them. Oh, yeah, well, by contract, they need to. I mean, that's our fault. By contract, they owe them that money. They have to pay it. Yeah, I was agree. I agreed we should have split it up about 10 years. They gave everybody 25000 Better get something out of that than nothing. Yeah, no joke. Because because they are, they are, they are. Gone. Very soon. Right, cool, Thanks for Thanks. the call. 458-TALK is a number. This is Patriot's Lament, who is on our phone this morning. Good morning. Red. Red, go ahead. Hey, uh, we got rid of that MTB gasoline that was corn oil that they tried to sell us. These, uh, the power goes off here for any reason with these little screw lamps, uh, fluorescent light and the, that's what they call them lights. They won't reignite until the temperature gets back up to where it belongs. Yeah, that is a good point. They do not fire off when they're cold or they have a long, oh, very hard time. Has, I got one on my porch that hasn't lit up now for a week. Yeah. Well, that's saving you energy, isn't it? <laughs> well, my light bill average is about 30 bucks a month anyway. 
Well, saving you, I guess uh, the law works. Yeah, exactly. Thanks for thanks for sharing that with us this morning. <laughs> Four, five, eight. I want to go back go real ahead. quick, uh, just to change the subject a little bit. I guess go ahead, Josh. or add to the subject was this last week when you had some several guys. Well, this whole month because our legislators are getting ready to go back to work in Juneau, unfortunately, and their whole deal is to pass this budget and how we need to pass this budget and. We're going to cut funding, cut spending, but we're actually going to add spending, you know, that whole gobbledygook thing. And we've had several people, I've called in and talked to them, uh, what will you do about the federal government over overriding state laws, overruling state laws, coming in like a bunch of goons, going into your, and by the way, hello to the people at the Justice Department, Happy New Year, I know you're listening. These goons come into people's homes without a warrant and... Uh, Refuse to show a warrant, totally breaking the law, mm-hmm. the rule of law, real rule of law, constitution. Um, so we asked these guys that are going back to Juno, what will you do about it? And the resounding thing is always, well, we can't do anything. Even um, one this last Tuesday, he actually came around and said, well, he actually agreed there is a problem, but he doesn't think he can do anything about it. So they just want to put their head in the sand and pass their budget. My question is, what are they going to do when the feds take the permanent fund? Because they're already taking steps. This is real world, folks, not like Mars. I haven't been reading the Mars news. I think on the 27th, the president passed legislation while everyone was in recess that gives, basically opens the door to attack and attach people's IRA accounts. Um, so, IRAs? Yeah. So... What is the state government going to do? What budget are they going to pass when the feds take the permanent fund? Because if you really think that they're not going to, do you think that the federal government is going to go bankrupt? You're going to have 49 other states that are completely bankrupt and upside down. They're going to allow Alaska to have $40 billion in a bank account? That's not fair. It ain't going to happen. Alaska needs to pay its fair share, Josh. And they will. Oh, yeah. And then what budget? Anyways, we can go back. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. This is Patriots Lament. Who's this? This is George. George, go ahead. Yeah, i just like to make some comments. You know, we got, number one, why are our senators and congressmen being paid by the federal government? They're our employees, not the Fed employees. They're loyal to us. We should set their pay and, oh, that's right, fire them if they ain't doing what we want. And the other thing is, is the United States of America, let's look at that real quick. United States of America. Kind of like the UN or NATO. Uh, all of our states are supposed to be their own country. We join together in this union in order for common defense, common currency, and common foreign policy because we didn't have the population or manpower per state to defend from outside forces. The federal government is not supposed to manage any land or anything inside these states. And it's high time that states like Alaska turn around and say, you know what, we're going to build this pipeline. Feds, come do your worst. The worst they can do is stop sending the money. You know what? I'm tired of being a subsidized state anyways. That's all we are. They're trying to keep us a uh, subsidized state and keep our economy down and dependent on them. And these goons that we have represented us don't realize that. Yeah, so the the direction to go with that is to call your representative in the state house or the state senate and ask them the following question. Um, ask them who has jurisdiction, ultimate jurisdiction in the state of Alaska, the federal government or the governor? Ask them that question. I've asked that on the show for about a month now, and no one has given me an answer. I've actually gotten in touch with people in in Juneau. No one has given me an answer. They go, uh, I don't know. Let me ask some people. And I have not gotten an answer to that. If we don't get an answer to that question, there's no point even talking about the idea that the state should be sovereign. Because, I mean, we can all all agree, you know, federalism uh, gives the most power to to the most local government, right? That's yep. how it's supposed to work. That's how it's supposed to work. But ultimately, like, who has jurisdiction? If if the answer to that question is not, you know, Sean Parnell or whatever, whoever the governor is, then there's no point even talking about all this stuff. So we well, have to answer that question first. 
Well, you know, if the answer's not Sean Parnell, well, that's something we need to change as a people. And each state just needs to turn around and start giving the feds a big finger and just do what we want and see what happens. You know, that's fine because talk, but how do, they will, how do you do that? How do you do that? Yeah, uh, how, how do you just give the fed the big finger as the state? Oh, as a state? Yeah. Go ahead and you start building that, uh, building the uh, pipeline right across supposed federal lands and wildlife refuge. You just go and do it. And you, when you would do it, they go, oh, you can't do that. Okay. Right. Right. And I, take, yeah, take it's a, a good. That's a court. that's a good oh, idea. But when the when the finger. governor when the governor of the state won't uphold the state constitution um, over federal agents who are acting in his state against yeah. the, against his own people, when he won't uphold his own constitution for the sake of his own people, what probability is there of him doing anything that's against federal law? Well, we just need a whole bunch of leaders with some cojones, and because I'm sorry, the feds time and time again break their own stinking laws. I think we could get away with just one per, one leader in cojones. All right. What'd you, thanks for the call. What did you say, Aaron? I said I think we could get away with just one leader with cojones, one good governor, and we'd be just like the Dakotas. Right. Four five eight talk is the number. We move on. See if we can get in at least one more call here before the end of the uh, segment. Coming up on the Fox News at the bottom of the hour, gentlemen. We've got a uh, nice. Uh, we've cleared the lines. Together. We've got about a minute here. Is there? Are, are we already looking at an action point yet today? Is there something that we can do? Well, I was going to um, tell Dave. Oh, here we go. Because I know you don't listen. <laughs> Last Tuesday, we did get that question was answered. Oh. Yes. Oh, right, right, and it was it was uh, it was the feds. Wasn't the it? federal government overrules state law. Right. That was from the state representative, representative Steve Thompson so, mentioned that. And but, but now what he said is it shouldn't be that way. I mean, we went back. I actually had Natalie Howard come in the next yeah. uh, the next day. We went back and listened to exactly what he said very carefully. He did say that it shouldn't be that way, but as a kind of a de facto in terms of who has the power, it is the feds who control the state. Right, which which we all know, we know that already. But like, where's the legal authority, right? There's got to be if somebody digs through statute and precedent and all that, all that garbage, somebody should be able to find some sort of legal authority somewhere. Um, and what you know, if in there theory, is no legal authority? In, uh, well, then maybe it should be established. Uh, but in theory, somebody in in Juno, a staffer or somebody like this, should know it, right? Or maybe the state attorney general should know. They get paid enough to do nothing. <laughs> Ouch. All right. Yeah. That being said, our, our number here is 458-TALK. Our website is? Uh, PatriotsLament.blogspot.com. And if you'd like to send us an email, we do have an email address, too. It's uh, PatriotsLament at gmail.com. We actually got some, some great emails last week, and I just need to get around to replying to them. So. All right. Very good. Uh, we also have a YouTube <laughs> channel if you'd like to go back and listen to some of our previous programs on YouTube, and it is? Yeah, the YouTube is Radio Free Fairbanks. All right, uh, stay with us. We're coming up at the Fox News at the bottom of the hour. On the other side, we'll take more phone calls and talk about what you want to talk about and also what happens to liberty here in uh, the state of Alaska when the feds collapse. (laughs) You've got it on Patriots Lament on KFAR, local talk radio. Fairbanks is listening to News Fair and Balanced. The home of Fox News Radio. Fox News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. With three days to go, four GOP presidential hopefuls are pushing for votes in the Hawkeye State. Rick Perry positioning himself as the Iowa caucus outsider. Uh, everyone else has either been in Congress or Wall Street, and you know they're part of the problem. They're they're not the solution. Two of the front runners have moved on for now: Mitt Romney in New Hampshire, Ron Paul in Texas. 2012 already rung in across Australia and Asia. <laughs> Those are revelers in Taipei, Taiwan. Here at home, crowds already staking out prime spots in New York's Times Square to see its famous ball drop. It's 12 feet in diameter and weighing in at a cool 12,000 pounds. The panels include 2,600 themed Waterford crystal triangles. It'll take the full final minute of 2011 for the ball to drop 77 feet. Fox Radio's Chris Honig, some early birds even getting to see it put through a test run. Fox News, we report, you decide. FAR never takes a vacation. Business is a rat race. We're here all day, every day. Local Talk Radio, 660 AM.
And welcome back to Patriots Lament right here on KFAR. I'm Steve Floyd, the uh, monkey behind the machine. Joining me on the other side of the table this morning, we've got Josh wow. Bennett from Far North. Excuse me, Josh Bennett from Bighorn. We've got Aaron Bennett from Far North Tactical, and we've got Dave Geisel from the Fairbanks Campaign for Liberty. Gentlemen, we've got all four lines on hold. What would you like to do? Go to? Go to the phones. Yeah. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? This is Randy. Randy, good morning. What's on your mind? Well, uh, last November 12, I called in to ask a question, and I kind of got a little derailed there and didn't quite get an answer, but uh, I thought I'd ask it again. Um, I read, uh, that, at that time, I read an article from the newspaper about how the police are doing their job and apprehending crooks and stuff. Anyway, uh, there's another similar headline from the Wednesday, December 28, 2011 paper. It says, Mail thefts plague state troopers, and it says some 150 Fairbanks residents have had mail stolen, according to state troopers, and it says down here, it says it's going to be a hundreds of man-hour investigation, but four suspects are believed to be responsible, and three of them were, were in jail. Anyway, another example of uh, the police doing their job, but... Uh, hey, uh, I, I got it. How, the how many... Job? Did they say how many uh, hundreds of hours that was going to take? It just simply says, uh, one of the paragraphs says, it's going to be a hundreds of man-hour investigation, he said. So is it going to is it going to cost more to conduct the investigation than was lost because of the uh, missing mail? I don't know. Because that would be something that would not happen with a free market uh, defense agency. They would never spend more money than they could stand to get back by solving uh, a, uh, a mystery like that. I wonder if it would happen if we had a free market mail industry where we didn't have to use USPS. USPO. Yeah, yeah, US. If, if we... Uh, could well, send your letter with anyone that you wanted to, and you'd be like, well, let's see. Am I going to send my letters with the people that get their mail stolen? Yeah. I won't do anything about it, or will? Keep in mind, too, that part of the issue here is that you have to put your mail, if you're going to receive mail from the Postal Service, you have to put it in an approved U.S. Postal Service box. We, I know somebody that just had his box, his personal box, taken down by the post office, and he got a new one put in that was, I think, like half the soft one. And, and obviously not as secure, but and they're also out there on the road instead of up by your house. So I mean, you know, do your choice, do it the government's way, and have it uh, delivered out there where anybody has access to it in a government-approved box. Is the argument here that um, law enforcement does their job? Is that yeah? What I'm well, getting? well, actually, my thing was not really an argument; it was a question. Uh, just to, and I'm not trying to get hung up on a particular type of crime. I'm just just pretending some old poor woman gets murdered and bludgeoned and raped and killed or something like that. Uh, I personally believe in number one, government police to conduct the investigation and the apprehension. Number two, I believe in government courts to determine the guilt or innocence of the accused and to. So what did they do? What did they do and before they had law enforcement? Let, let me get to number three. I believe in government prisons to uh, incarcerate the guilty. And what I was going to ask, and I know that Josh and uh, and, and uh, Dave, there are not necessarily carbon copies, but kind of directly going to Dave Giesel, who I know whose position on this, you know, you don't want any of those three things I just named. What is your idea? Can you kind of flesh it out? How, you know, we could get rid of the Fairbanks uh, police, city police, and the troopers and the North Pole police, and if, if we did that to sort of uh, descale down government, what's your, what would you put in its place? <laughs> Uh, well, crime would drop dramatically. I mean, uh, something like 91% of people in prison um, are there for victimless crimes. So if you got rid of police putting people in jail for crimes against the state, which have no victim, 91% uh, of the people released from jail, which is almost all of them, would uh, would just go free, and they and they haven't hurt anyone anyway. Yeah, I agree with and you on that. so that would that would free up a huge amount of resources. What is it, forty or fifty thousand dollars per person in jail? So the economic conditions in the borough for people exchanging voluntarily and not having guns pointed at them to pay for these police and and jails and courts would go up dramatically. We'd be far wealthier here, and uh, wealthier civilizations have dramatically dramatically less crime. I mean, look at crime rates in say Singapore versus uh, versus Malaysia. It's night and day. And so your need for all of those things goes down as you have less of them. It's like it, it creates, you know, more police, more laws, more courts, more jails, actually creates more crime, which creates more need for those things. So if you eliminated them, you'd have a, an essentially trivial amount of uh, 
of crime, and then it would be up to neighbors to figure out how to do that themselves through community watch programs and things like that, which they did for years before there was a borough up here. I mean, there's all sorts of books about the uh, mining era up here, which you're free to read. I'm not going to sit here and you know tell you what kind of system of justice is the best one, because I don't know. But uh, miners figured it out up here years ago. I mean, you don't even have to go halfway around the world to find an example. You just have to read a little bit of history. I agree with you about lowering the uh, victimless crimes. We don't need victimless crimes. But uh, specifically for Fairbanks, you know, just talking rubber meets the road. And I guess you kind of answered my question. You said you don't know, but uh, John, no one, you no one knows. Different? Actually, John, that's the whole point of putting it out in the market. Is the market would find the most efficient way to allocate resources based on how much people want to spend on security and protection versus how much they want to spend on other things. Right now, they don't even have the choice. How about you, Josh? Uh, are you for getting rid of the Fairbanks City Police and the state troopers and the North Pole Police? Or are you di- do you differ from uh, Dave Geisel? Oh no, I'm all for it. I mean, first Forget of all, you have to. Oh yeah, look at the. So what do you want? What, to put what you're place? asking is, um, what would we do if we didn't have these police? Because I mean, basically, your premise is that we have no crime. Well, you just said, well, what about poor grandma that got killed or this and that? Yeah. Look in the paper. We have lots of police. People are getting yeah. ripped off. I was stolen from here a couple months ago. People are still getting murdered. So what exactly are they doing except for creating revenue for the state? Um, There is obviously, if we didn't have police, there would still be victim crimes. But I think as a society, we could probably take care of them without having the police. I guarantee we could. I mean, because look at history. It's happened all the time. You haven't always had... A hundred and some police officers running around. I don't know how many we have, but you haven't always had state troopers. You haven't always had city cops. You haven't always had county cops. You haven't always had that, and we still survived quite well. And But what they did when they uh, – let's jail go back to the Old West. Then. They had a one-cell jail. Well, still and now we have – But you had potheads it. everywhere. My yeah. God, it was terrible. <laughs> Well, maybe I caught you off guard or something, but so think about it. So maybe next week, come oh, up with I've that. Randy, we Randy, we've Pegasus. posted ad nauseum on this on the blog. You just um, said you didn't and know. I'm, I'm, What's your answer? I'm no, asking. Randy, Randy, what? that's yeah. the beauty of how many, what should Fred Meyer stock on their shelves, Randy? I don't know the answer to that. Fred Meyer doesn't know the answer to that. It's a dynamic solution because the market is dynamic because people's preferences change constantly. If you try to cram a single answer down 100,000 people's throats, you create 99,999 wrong answers. That is the problem with statism, Randy. You are trying to shove your idea down everyone else's throat. There are no hard answers to most of the questions in society. That's why you you engage in voluntary action to discover the best answers, because none of us are smart enough to know. Certainly none of us in this radio station here is smart enough. Well, if you're advocating getting rid of the Fairbanks police and the state troopers, surely you can speculate as to a possible answer. For instance, I could do it myself. I could say, if well, I speculated, we I would be wrong. I would be incorrect if I speculated. Well, I could throw out an idea. I could start a company and try and compete, and then my customers would guide me in the right direction that I should go. They'd say, no, you're not doing this right. You need to investigate these more. You need to investigate these less. You need to stop macing kids who aren't doing anything, oh. and you need to start going after criminals who have actually injured someone. There would be these forces at play that would actually steer my decisions as a business owner. But I can't just get up here on the radio and say, this is how things should be, because that would make me a politician, and I am no, an anarchist. Make you a I am dictator. against political systems. Okay, you've given me your answer, and it's fair enough, but I, therefore, because you there's have a, no There's answer, a book, Randy. I, I know you like to read. So there's there's actually a book where they talk about how this could work. It's called The Market for... It's Hang on, Randy. All right, Randy, you, get a pen. On. It's called The Market for Liberty, and it's by Linda and Morris Tannehill, and they outline how private defense agencies could work. So once again, once again, you got your pen ready, because I'm not going to answer this question again until you've read this book, Randy. It's called The Market for Liberty, and it's by Linda and Morris Tannehill. Give that a read and um, call back with this question after you've read it. No, Thanks. I'd like to know the what the, what bef- did you drop? Him? No, I haven't dropped him yet. Um, what do you think would happen if they were gone, Randy? Crime would increase, and we'd have a harder time apprehending the criminal. What kind and of crime? We'd crimes? have less justice when the criminal, when I get apprehended accidentally by a private uh, renegade society and put in, in someone's... Uh, Don't we have a renegade uh, Do you not know that people get apprehended all the time by the uh, government-instituted police? Yes, and if I got arrested because someone suspected I killed uh, an old lady or something, 
I would hope for justice, and I could prove that it wasn't even there at the scene of the crime and so forth and so on. But if some private agency, some vigilante society apprehended me and then threw me into somebody's private courtroom that uh, populated by who knows what kind of jury and then threw me into a prison in somebody's uh, for pay basement or something in a dungeon, no, I wouldn't that, be too comfortable with that. that Unless actually, you can give me a better uh, system and give me some, 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 uh, some comfort or some... Uh, you mean like the National Detention Act that we just passed, the National Defense Authorization Act? Is that what I you're talking about? I am troubled by that. I am troubled by that. Well, Randy, like think, think about – I would like to uh, – you're talking about, well, what does this happen? This happens all the time. Do you know Mike Anderson? The guy was thrown in jail for eight freaking months by your system, and he didn't do a dang thing. So what the heck are you talking about? And just because you don't have a police force doesn't mean you can't have a court. Isn't our court system kind of supposed? Court? Doesn't our court system supposed to be of the people, by the people, and for the people? Yeah, aren't of, jurors? Yeah, aren't jurors about? supposed to be your peers? So what That's makes right. it? Why do you have to have a state instituted government court to have people sit in a jury and say what is right or wrong? So why do you have to kept have on that? The up and up. That's why. So everything's kept on the up and up. Kept on the up and up when you have a government court system that decides where you have a judge that tells a juror that they cannot judge the law, and you have a judge working for the state, getting paid by the state, and a prosecutor gets paid by the state, the policeman get paid by the state, the defense attorney half the time gets paid by the state, and what does he? What does the judge do? He decides what evidence can be shown he decides what you can say in the courtroom so where is the justice in that if you had a free if you had free people and you had okay this guy committed a crime and you got a jury together it is quite possible because we are free thinking individuals most of us should be <laughs> and we should be able to have a court and get together and say you have done wrong this is wrong you don't need the government to decide what's wrong randy i bet i can guarantee you before there was the united states constitution murder was wrong theft was wrong those things have always been wrong the only thing that the government has instituted is laws that do not harm anyone to get money from them you think that's we, why there's 91 percent of people in jail for state crimes for state crimes. We have everything that you just said is going on right now because of the state enforcement. The National Detention the National Defense Authorization Act. I shorten it up to just the National Detention Act. That's what they do right now, Randy. They just passed the law so they can do that. All right, we've got a bunch of lines on hold. Thanks for the call, Randy. We're moving on. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning. And it looks like we did drive all the other calls off. If you'd I like wanted... to participate, go ahead. 458 Talk is the number. Go ahead, Aaron. Yeah, Far North Tactical got robbed day before yesterday. And having um, all the state institutions we have didn't stop that from happening. There you have it. We had a... Did you stop it, Aaron? Did I? Yeah. I, okay. That's not the point. We had three people come in and rob the bejesus out of us. They actually stole firearms. That's that's a pretty big offense there, I believe. And they packed up a bunch of them in their coats and walked out of the store with them. Uh, law enforcement, what if I would have called them? They would have been there, what, 30 minutes later? Well, no, you wouldn't have your guns right now because they'd hang on to them for one to two years. Easy. Well, yeah, I've, I've had guns stolen five times in my life, and I've yet to have one back. But from Except, the police. Now, right. now, what happened in this case? You stopped the guys? I decided to go get my guns back myself. <laughs> and you got them back? They're sitting in the store. All right. 458 Talk is the number. For by the way. <laughs> yeah, all four of the uh, lines are on hold. Good morning. This is Patriots Lament. Who's this? Lisa. Good morning, Lisa. What's on your mind? Uh, you guys are more uh, utopian than communists because at least communists know they need strength to operate their scam, you know, to keep their elite in power. No, we, we, we know they need to think that crime won't increase when our strength for justice goes away, and so that's just very utopian, you know. It's real. Define flaky. justice. Yeah, what is justice? Is is um, what people get when they operate their government properly with a good moral sense? Like what we're doing right now. Well, no, we've got a lot of evil people in power. Uh, don't you see corruption at every level? The government's been taken over by a, a bad crew. Yeah, since so 1790. What, what do we need to do, Lisa? Vote in the right people? Well, that's what you always say, you know, what happened to the Tea Party? They've been co-opted. Well, no, they're actually at work. There's just not enough of them. They don't control the Senate. They can't stop what Obama does. The House can not stop the incandescent light bulb ban. And they are controlled, but one, they are controlled by the Republicans, Lisa. Well, the, the Republicans are not Tea Partiers. Get it straight. And, you know. Uh, but Tea Partiers are Republicans, right? <laughs> well, they're not Democrats. 
Tea Partiers are Republicans, aren't they? No. Uh, they know how to work together to uh, uh, on a common cause and uh, not be, you know, vote splitters and uh, serial vote What splitters cause and, is that? Uh, well, aren't we working for a righteous cause? Aren't we no, all? no, like, like just any, just pick a cause out of thin air that that they're supposedly working towards together. Just any one of them, I'd be interested. Having the right size government. Uh, what is what is that? What is the right size government? Well, just like Jesus, you know, he knew he should pay taxes, and he stopped uh, his when mission for a day and went went fishing to go get that coin in the fish. Yeah, he mouth. didn't pay the tax. Well, then then he said, yeah, go and pay unto Caesar, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, and of course, what is Caesar's. Face was but on but the even coin. still, we're we're asking it. If if you believe in the right size government, that would imply something tangible. What is the right size government? Well, that's just like you say. It's moving target. It's what the people would like, and the people. So get so exactly wait 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 wait. Can we can we do vote. this, Steve? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, cool. So you just said mm-hmm. it's what the people would like. Well, we have a system where the people are getting what they like right now, and so I don't understand how you're complaining about it. it was, wasn't everyone elected by a democratic process? 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. You're next on Patriots Lament. Who's this? This is Mark. Mark, go ahead. Uh, yeah, gentlemen, Congress adjourned soon to die in 1861. That's a Latin phrase. It means someday when you all wake up and reelect a proper uh, Republican government. And that never happened. And so that makes the state of Alaska a suzerain state to the United Nations under the Tennessee plan. And in our history of the miners' court over there in Eagle, that's why they built Fort Egbert. I don't see much hope. We're just going to have to ride it out to the bitter end, drink this cup to the bitter dregs. Out here, gentlemen. Thanks for the call. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. This is Patriots Lament. Who is this? All right, they didn't wait for us. Dave, go ahead. Um, I was just going to comment on that last call. Thankfully, uh, we're uh, we're closer to that now than we used to be. Definitely. Oh, the end, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, we certainly are. Uh, Happy New Year, by the way. Uh, you're, uh, um, you can, yeah, go ahead. I have uh, I have this little thing that I wanted to read off. Um, so. This concerns the uh, the Republican presidential candidates. Um, I don't know which one is for the right size government, as if that exists. But uh, this question was posed by uh, the New York New York Times. And it says, under what circumstances, if any, would the Constitution permit the president to authorize the targeted killing of a United States citizen who has not been sentenced to death by a court? Interesting question. Rule of law, Dave. Yeah, dun, dun, dun. So we have uh, four clowns and one guy who answered. And so I'll read off some of the uh, the clown answers. Uh little music in the background? Yeah, so you have, you have Newt here. He says, under wartime circumstances or in the case of... An imminent threat to the United States. That's when the the president should be allowed to just kill whoever he wants. Um, Huntsman says, if such an individual is engaged on a battlefield, it would be impossible not to kill him, just as the police are often for- forced to use uh, deadly force in certain circumstances. The Fifth Amendment's protection of against taking the life without due process does not mandate the use of judicial processes in all circumstances. In the in the conduct of military operations, the re- relevant procedural uh, protection is in the executive branch's commitment to taking all reasonable steps to make sure that deadly force is warranted, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah. Those so he's, jerks, he's all for it. You know what they did when they wrote the Fifth Amendment? They must, uh, at some point in history, there's someone deleted the part that says, <laughs> unless. Right, like the First Amendment yeah. shall not be infringed. Unless. Unless. Uh, so then we have Rick Perry. The Constitution clearly vests in the president full executive authority. Uh, and an absolute duty to protect the nation when vital American interests, blah, 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 blah. Um, See, Kyle, and then he goes on, to which the president must respond. Um, he's talking about wait, hostilities. You're reading all Republicans here. Dave. Yeah, no, these are the Republican candidates. Oh. Anyway, so so these guys all give like these multi-paragraph answers where at the end they say, uh, kill them all. So here's Mitt Romney. All U.S. citizens enjoy due process and habeas corpus under the Constitution. That's how he starts out. And then his last sentence is, but if necessary to defend the country, I would be willing to authorize the use of lethal lethal force. Why bother saying all the other stuff, Mitt? And then you have this guy, Ron Paul. And so, again, the question is, under what circumstances, if any, would the Constitution permit the president to authorize the targeted killing of a United States citizen who has not been sentenced to death by a court? 
So instead of writing paragraph after paragraph contradicting himself, Ron Paul says one word, none. He must be some kind of a radical freak. That is scary. Yeah, now I am, I know why people are scared of him. I am that terrified. He believes in the Fifth Amendment. <gasps> what next? Uh, 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. This is Patriots Lament. Who's this? All right, we've got somebody playing with our phones today, gentlemen. Oh, my goodness. Uh, uh, we've already had one action point today so far, and that is to read the book Market for Liberty yeah. by? Uh, the Market for Liberty by Linda and Morris Tannehill. And I will put a link to the PDF up on the blog. That's a really good book. Yeah, it is. It is. I've read that book. It's Aaron. That's a really good book. I was going to read it till Aaron told me to read it. It's, uh, <laughs> I had a hard time coming to grips with what they were saying, but I I couldn't help it. I mean, they did a really good job. It was a really good book. <laughs> All right. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning. This is Patriots Lament. Who's this? Yeah, good morning. Hey, good morning. Who is this? Tom. Tom, go ahead. Hey, I'm uh, just uh, curious. There is the Ron Paul thing going here. Uh isn't Ron Paul like on the wrong side of the fence, being as the way he thinks, but he's rip up, uh, running on the Republican platform? So he's kind of looking at it from both sides of the glass. Seems kind of funny that uh, I'm supposed to trust him over the other ones, yet he's running on a party that he don't really believe in. How does that work? I think the party accepted him into the party, right? Aren't yeah, well, he'd, he'd been part of the Republican Party since since the 70s, but he ran as a libertarian in uh, 88, uh, but that uh, didn't really work out. Yeah, I just, his, uh, his, just his goal, he's not trying, well, if you read like the state of Alaska Republican Party platform, it actually uh, fits quite well with uh, the stuff that Ron Paul talks about, um, and even the, even the national platform. So he's... He's just advocating the Constitution and that the Republicans uphold their party platform, um, whereas everyone else is trying to say, well, the Republican Party should do whatever I want them to do. Yeah, and well, the Constitution should mean whatever what I want, want it to mean. It, it just seems that everybody's picking out what they want to hear from their side of their candidate. That's kind of what it's coming down to in the end. But uh, it's I know you basically true. Basically true. To base. Uh, to base your vote upon the man and, you know, the job because he doesn't have a chance to win. But I don't know. I was listening to some of the radio this week here. and Somebody had a good point that if you base it upon the man and I'm voting for, you know, the Sam the Eagle just because it's Sam the Eagle and it's the right thing to do. But you got to sit around and look at Turkey Bob for four more years, which is going to kill us. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Bye. Thanks for the call. All right. 458-TALK is the number. Good morning. This is Patriots Lament. Who's this? Uh, Lisa, the Lisa, you already called today. We're going to limit you to one. We got too many calls. Good morning. Who's this? Welcome to the program. Who's on the phone? Speak or die. All right. Goodbye. All right, gentlemen. We got uh, just five minutes left. Where are we going? <laughs> um, yeah. Not, Speak or die, Dave. Boy, Speak or die, Dave. That's daunting. <laughs> no, it's been uh, it's been a fun year doing the show. I mean, we're here on the 31st, and uh, I think this is like our 30th episode now, or our 32nd hmm. episode maybe even. Yeah. So, no, it's been good. And uh, yeah, you know, the fun. callers have been good. The blog's really picked up. It's been uh, it's been a lot of fun. It's The most fun, I think, is getting feedback. You know, the callers have made this show what it is, and the, uh, the people posting on the blog, uh, that sort of feedback on our posts really, uh, it's interesting. It's very thought-provoking. I've enjoyed Randy calling. I sincerely appreciate it when he calls because he uh, makes us bend our mind a little bit. And uh, he always comes back. That's kind of cool. Yeah, exactly. 458 talk is a number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Good morning, gentlemen. Hey, who's this? This is Michael. Michael, go ahead. Hey, uh, I'm going to bring you back to what most of us spend our whole lives trying to acquire, and that's money. And until we get some honest money in this corrupt system, we are slaves. Thank you. Thanks for the call. All right, some honest money. What does that mean, Dave? Uh, yeah, well, that I mean, that raises an interesting question. Can you have honest money in a corrupt system? Um, you know, and this is the, you know, all the attempts to end the Federal Reserve or, or change back to a, a gold standard or something. But if you have a corrupt government managing or determining the value, it's not going to last very long. 
But there's all sorts of uh, free market alternatives there that are emerging, which uh, I think are quite exciting. And I think they're going to emerge despite and in spite of um, the state. And I think that's going to be one of the things that not only uh, devolves state power, um, but renders the state redundant, actually. Yeah. You know, we had that we had that one caller talk about uh, approaching the end um, as if it were a bad thing. But I think I think we're actually just going to render most of the state's functions redundant and we won't even miss them. We won't even understand why we ever asked the state to do those things for us. Yeah, we do agree that one of our major problems is the lack of a sound money, an unlawful money, really, but what we have right now. All right, 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. This is Patriot's Lament. Who's this? All right. It's always fun when you have people that call in and get on hold and then drop off because you never know if it's somebody that wanted to say something and then change their mind or if it's somebody who's intentionally trying to keep other people from getting through. That has happened before. 458 Talk is a number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Gloria. Gloria, good morning. What's on Uh, your mind? Yes, I I love so much about uh, Ron Paul, but uh, I'm just thinking that uh, if he got in, he'd be assassinated. They'd get rid of him in a hurry because he's just so right and good. He knows that, though. Yeah, but I mean, uh, isn't he better as a a fighter out in the, uh, you know, uh, out here in the the communities or... uh, you know, on on in where he is now. Well, yeah. Paying attention uh, to you know the, the wrongs. Uh, Josh and I actually talked about this um, yesterday. Um, all of the people, like last time around when he ran, there was this huge media blackout, and you know the supporters were very <laughs> upset about it, but there just weren't that ver- very many supporters. This time around, there's a lot more, and what they can get away with as far as the uh, the media blackout is is being reduced significantly. Anytime there's anytime they, you know, go out of their way to erase Ron Paul's name from a poll or something like that, it's all over the internet. And so because his support has grown, um uh, there's a whole a whole group of people out there who'll just get totally pissed if something um like that were to happen. And so uh as as he becomes kind of more popular, the possibility of, you know, it's an event like you talked about um kind of decreases. But even if that sort of event did go down, it would just it would just result in uh, even more fervor. It wouldn't it wouldn't you know quell the dissent. It would amplify it. Who it would, would backfire. Be the replacement for him. Uh, I I don't know, but but maybe uh, you know those those kind of people emerge. It's always always one of those things where when when there's a necessity for something, um, it emerges, and and that's the whole point. Is all these people who are uh, Ron Paul fans, they're not just voting for him because they like his campaign sign or something like that. They're going out and reading about economics and about liberty and the Constitution. And so all of these supporters are actually you know, becoming very well-educated advocates of liberty. We are out of time, guys. Thanks for being here today. 60 a.m. KFAR Fairbanks.